Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Recruitment Uncensored with me. You all know me by now, I'm Kate. I have got um, an amazing guest on with me today who's called Steve Guest. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with him. Uh, but if not, he's been in the industry how many years now, Steve? I think this is my 19th year, I think. 19th year. There and there about. Yeah. So obviously tons of industry experience, but um, you know, author of three, well, two, soon to be three fabulous books. You're a keynote speaker as well, aren't you, Steve? You've got your own agency. So fantastic guest to have on today to talk about a subject which when we were chatting before, even if you are good at time management, it's still on your mind every day as a recruiter because you could do our job 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. So it's a big thing and a lot of it is something that a lot of people struggle with. So that is why we've made it the focus of today. Um, and that is why, uh, Steve, well, I'm going to cover off some questions with Steve, but I want you guys to interact on the chat as well. So anything we talk about that you want to probe more around or if you've got any questions, chuck it in the comments. I'll keep an eye on it and um, we'll add your questions in where we can. But let's get started because obviously it's my um, job to keep the time management of the of the uh, episode today. We've only got half an hour and we easily yeah. could talk about this for a day. So let's get yeah. started. First question, what can people do to maximise their time each day in our job? Because, I mean, it is endless, the responsibilities we have, isn't it? Yeah, I, th I think the nature of recruitment, it's, it's littered with distractions and other things you could be doing at any point during the day and I think the ability to maximize your time always starts with having a plan um, a set kind of structure or idea of what you're looking to achieve each day regardless of whatever that day is during the week so first and foremost is having a plan of what you need to be doing um, and actually what it is that your outputs need to achieve you need to achieve the goals um, and, and I think having the focus and the clarity of what you need to achieve during that day will help you obviously move forward. The trouble in most recruiters lives is you get distracted by the phone calls that come in or the managers or your peers or your colleagues that say, oh, could you just do this? Could you just format this CV or such and such as rang wanting to know how many hours they've worked and so many things that can come in and they're always at the wrong time because you're doing something else. So the ability to stay focused and have specific times during the day that are centered around what you're trying to, to achieve. Um, I spend a lot of time talking and, and mentoring consultants on the basis that you split your day up. So if you can have kind of central core sales hours or the hours that are focused on your output, so ideally between nine and 12 and two till five, if you can have those as your central kind of sales sections and then you can have admin or downtime um, before nine, between 12 and two, and then maybe after five. Those times will differ depending on what market you're in, of course. But the ability to section those off and stay focused with them allows you to achieve those outputs. Um, mm. When I talk about things like admin tasks, for me, it's... If you're chasing timesheets or you're checking on someone's hours, you're perhaps offering some feedback, um, you're chasing things up, you're formatting CVs, you're writing adverts or job specs or profiles, maybe putting posts out on LinkedIn. Um, it's all those things that I would class as, um, I suppose, non-core activities, albeit they are part of your daily setup. Yeah. The sales calls, the sending of CVs, the arranging of interviews all have a financial element attached to them. The other bits, are, I suppose, are the parts that you need to do to get to that point. Yeah. Um, I talk a lot about being selfish with your time. So in the role that I had for 11 years when I worked with Fast Track, I had at its peak 19 staff across two offices and I was a billing manager. Um, and I had to be really ruthless and selfish with my time to the point where I would say, is it life or death? Can it wait till 12? If so, come back to me. And it got to the point where I suppose in many ways you condition the people around you to work the same. And actually the distracting questions or the bits that would take you off 
your path. You could spend time between 12 and 2 or before 9 or after half 4 or 5 to focus on those areas while you were selfish enough to still get your daily outputs done and your KPIs yeah. and activity targets hit. Um, having that focus and that ability to be selfish and ruthless is really difficult. But actually over time, if you can condition clients and candidates to call you between 12 and 2 for a catch-up, it helps you focus on what you've got to do during the other hours. If you do it with yeah. family members and people around you that perhaps ring for a quick catch-up, they get to know, well, I'll only ever get Steve between 12 and 2 because I know he does his sales calls up till then. It yeah. allows you to, to set your days and actually get more from it because you've got a genuine focus. Yeah, did it with a girl recently. They she was doing um, uh, like she she worked this temp recruitment within the care sector, and she was finding a lot of her candidates were ringing um just to check like what shift she had, but at, at a time of day when she was trying to do other stuff. And we said, right, why don't you just communicate with the candidates to ring you between these hours, and then they're going to get to speak to you instead of you saying I'll call you back another time or I'll call you back later. Yeah. So you're saving time because you're not fielding those yeah. calls at a time where you can speak and for the candidates it's great because they're like oh i get to speak to her straight away instead of call back later call back later so it's yeah. a win-win then isn't it it's just really important because it's setting your stall out and it's showing how you work but you're also advising the best process for the people that you're trying to offer that service to if they're always mm. calling you during the hours you're you're doing outbound sales calls and they can never get hold of you you become the consultant they can never get hold of exactly yeah and then you've got a really long list of people to call back between certain hours that you never quite reach the end of because and they may not answer so exactly. you're just playing tennis then aren't you with each other it's a, it's a consistent thing and i think um i mean the the other potential option there is to to learn to delegate tasks so at fast track we had a resource team so it was very much or it was a lot easier for the temp consultants to be able to say if you've got questions on your timesheet or how many hours or this that and the other and it's just something that can is almost like an, an admin based question you delegate it to someone else mm. and that then allows you to free up your time to do other potential options um i think another another option that people can do is um Part of the training program we do like a 21 day um you you record your actions for 21 days and we have a green pen a blue pen and a red pen and you have revenue tasks non-revenue tasks and time wasting tasks and you have a set of beeper and every half an hour or an hour whatever time frame you wish to do uh, when it beeps you stop what you're doing and you use one of those pens to decide whether you're wasting time Doing something that's mm. actually going to make you some money or actually doing something that will make you money. Yeah. And when you start it, you realise you've got loads of red dots and you don't realise how much time you actually waste procrastinating or talking about... It gives you that mirror, doesn't it? Yeah, making that seventh round of, cup of cups of tea for the day. And what the <laughs> task is then is to just start to learn to reduce the time-wasting areas. And then your days become even more effective because you're actually assessing how efficient you are almost on a, an hourly basis, if not a half hourly basis. And it allows you then to, again, maximise your time a little bit better because you understand how you work a little bit more. You can also yeah. see the, the moments during the day where you're more likely to be distracted. So maybe it is towards lunchtime where you're getting a little bit hungrier, you, the caffeine's worn off, and you start yeah. realising that you're staring at a social media screen for far too long or finding other things to do and and you can perhaps learn to or learn ways around doing that because you know that's an element of what you end up doing you waste a little bit of time or you start to get distracted yeah I, I've that's I used to, when I was in a consultant you talked about kind of looking at like the money making tasks basically mm. that is how I used to prioritize in a way my with stuff if stuff got thrown at me it was like right First of all, is this this is this something that's going to make me money? And then prioritizing it in terms of how much yeah. and working my way. I so I had a little to do list with anything that got fired at me. Write it down. It's like right. Well, where is this going to sit in that priority list? Yeah. Because that was what I was motivated by was 
So, if, you know, it, it would just help me prioritize, but it would also make sure that I wasn't, like you said, wasting time on stuff. Mm. I worked with um, a coach a couple of years ago now when I started the business and she taught me something like, it's similar to your 21 day thing. It was like these five pillars and we co I color coded them. So in my calendar is made up of different co blocks of color. So I can make sure that I'm given the same amount of time. I'm given enough time to things like the business development activities yeah. and the client work and not so much stuff that actually doesn't bring in the money to my business. I'm looking for enough of the colors in the right places. And it, yeah. it just make you see sometimes where you think you might be doing all the right things, but actually, no, I need to give more time to that, doesn't it? I definitely, I, I remember um, having a conversation with the consultant, this was a few years ago, and they were a really busy consultant. They would be on the phone all day, they would be noisy, you'd hear them, um, they'd be very active. And actually, when it got to the point of assessing what they were doing during the day, I think on one particular day, I think they'd made four or five outbound calls. And the problem was they were really quick at answering the phone, which is great yeah. in an office, but not if you're trying to achieve your own particular goals. They were very busy and there was no question of that. But in terms of actually focusing on what they needed to do to do well in the job they're employed to do, they weren't focused in the right areas. So we had to yeah. we had to work on ways in which improve their focus and I suppose um kpis or the clarity on what they're trying to achieve and almost remove them from any distractions of a phone ringing in to ensure that they achieve what they need to achieve and we all have elements of that we can all be distracted yeah, i've seen by that before the shiny penny we can be distracted by the noise in the office or the need to be doing something sometimes it boils down to just the fact that we haven't planned out what we're looking to do and we're, yeah. we're coming in a little bit well We'll just wait to see what comes in or i've got that job i'm going to work on that but then i've just had that come in so i'm going to go and do that these candidates just applied they're really good i'm going to send them over there and by the time you've reached lunchtime you th you've probably done three tasks but not done any <laughs> one particular task particularly well and i think that's where having the plan and the ability to prioritize as you say what's needed at that time and knowing what level of priority it is is part of learning it's part of experience um and potential potentially having the right people around you to help you decide what's worth working on and what's not yeah um, it's all part of any daily setup well that takes me on to my next question so i know we've spoken we've kind of brought it in a little bit already but because look for, at the end of the day some of us love structure and time management stuff i do like i love all that stuff for others it's not a natural thing is it so no. sometimes people can see like you know hearing like put a plan in place right that's great but actually how does it how does structure and time management improve results because for some people they kind of need to know that to put it into place does that make sense it's not it's yeah. not a natural thing is it for everybody no it's not and and it's really difficult and, and in my experience most recruiters struggle they struggle with structure and that ability to plan because they like the cut and thrust and the speed at which the process can move. And you almost get drawn along with it. And I think sometimes, for me anyway, I'm I'm borderline OCD. I like predictability. I like things to be in order. Yeah, me too. I, like, I like things to have a set pattern. So it is my natural way of being in life and in work that structure and time management is part of what I do. But what it does do is as we've mentioned, it, click, it creates focus, it creates clarity. It allows things to become more predictable because if you've got structure and you go through a repeat, repeatable process, what you'll find is over time, you'll start to get repeatable results. And what that then allows you to do is scale things, whether that's as an individual business or a business as a whole. If you know it takes... 30 CV send outs in a week to achieve 10 interviews to arrange, sorry, to, to get four offers, to get two placements. The structure around it all and how the, all the KPIs and the numbers fit with how you work and what you do allows you to plan ahead in terms of, well, if I build this, this is what I'm going to do. If my target is this and I double it, how am I going to do it? What am I going to do to achieve it? The structure and, and that ability to 
I suppose, have them small targets as part of your structure in the way that you manage your time allows yeah. you to effectively achieve those results. It's all linked. If there's many consultants, say, that will have a really good month, let's say they've had a record month, they've placed more people than they've ever placed before. You might say it's a bit of luck, it's a bit of, I don't know, good timing. It might be that they've worked really hard. And when you say, well, have you achieved that? In my experience, a lot of consultants will say, well, I've just worked hard and it just seems yeah, to just did my job. to that point. Or alternatively, they've had a bad month, they haven't built anything. Um, and they don't know how they've got to that result. Mm. Made loads of calls, I've left loads of messages, I've done this, that and the other. Um, but because there's not necessarily the structure and the time management and everything in place to be able to say, this is what I've done, this is how I've done it, and these are the amount of calls I've made, these are the amount of CVs I've sent out. Because it lacks that element of structure, they don't know what makes a good or bad month. Yeah. So the ability to structure everything. And I, we do a lot of things in, in the office here where we'll structure it, and it might even be on a really small time frame. So, I don't know, I'm going to speak to five new clients in the next 60 minutes. Or, or it's something that is time kind of ruled, but actually allows you that structure to can be to be entirely focused on that task in that moment. And it allows you to yeah. get the results because you you know you've got to try and speak to those five. We have um, an activity week, first week of every month, because the idea behind it is increase activity levels, but it allows the next three weeks or four weeks of that month to hopefully reap benefits of having a hugely energetic first week. Those activity weeks are based around having good structure um, and ensuring the time management allows you to fit in more activity, even though we work similar hours. Nothing yeah. changes. Um, I think in terms of the structure and time management, it gives you balance, it gives you clarity, it allows you to focus on the detail. It provides you with a measurable path to be able to then go back and assess what you've done and how you've got there. Um, if you yeah. go through a, a similar process each time you manage selling a candidate, working on a vacancy, doing your general business development, if you're going through that and it has a structure to it, you can tweak it, you can add to it. I'm a firm believer or I love the, the idea of the compound effect and those 1% incremental changes you start looking at that across the whole recruitment process and specifically time management and structure you can actually reap huge rewards because you're finding areas that you're good at and you're actually just trying to think well how do i make that just slightly better if i made yeah. an extra sales call a day over a year i think that equates to an extra two weeks worth of work and i worked it out that was some years ago so it might, might have changed I think based on 20 sales calls a day back in the day, one extra sales call a day meant I worked two extra weeks. The compound effect of that is massive. And actually yeah. on any given day, it's not that big. I think as well what you mentioned about understanding like a good or bad month or quarter or even a day, I, I found this re – I do this myself, right, with my business, um, but I've been doing it a lot with some of the trainees that I've been working with or people newer to recruitment with BD calls is t tally up, right, so I, how many calls are you making? How many is that go then go into conversations? How many of that are then are you getting a meeting out of it or whatever you want, yeah. however you want to do it? Because sometimes you can – have a morning maybe where you're doing business development and be like, oh, gosh, it's a really bad morning. I've made five dials, no, not one conversation. But actually, if you track it and you've got that structure and yeah. you know that typically it takes you seven to get through to a decision maker, well, actually, that isn't a bad morning. Yeah. So your mind it helps your mindset as well, doesn't it, to think, actually, I'm being too critical here. This is normal and I need to keep going instead of stopping Absolutely. and giving up. Um, there's a great book called Go For No. If, um, yeah, I've heard of that book. Yeah, if, if you haven't read it, it's a great book because it turns the idea of that level of rejection or that that bit where you're not getting the yes answers that you think you should be getting. Um, just on that topic, it's, it, it's a great read. It's a short read. It doesn't take um, – it's not a particularly onerous book to get through, um, but it does certainly flip it on its head and it does help. Um, I think the other thing with structure and time management is it removes – 
procrastination, it removes that element of overwhelm. Because if you know what you've got to do and you know the time frame in which you've got to do it, it removes any danger of you being pulled into doing something different, potentially. Uh, Not always the case. And also um, builds your confidence, I think, as well. Yeah, it removes confusion. It removes that, um, I suppose, that part of all of us. We all have it somewhere in there where if it looks like too big a task or something is unachievable or unrealistic, we tend to shy away from it. And it's like when you when you set yourself up. So I have yearly goals, yearly targets. I do them every year during Christmas and New Year. I set my year up and this covers all areas of my life, work, business, individual desks and, and the people around me and financial goals and things. And then I split them down into months, the months into weeks and the weeks into days. And then quite often the days into sections because actually achieving certain goals within an hour that build up to that yearly goal is far easier to focus on. And having the structure for that hour or what you're looking to achieve is less overwhelming and less confusing and gives you that element of achieving something than if it's just all a bit too big or a little bit too wishy-washy and, and a little bit all over the place. So for me, structure and, and time frame, I suppose, is my safe place. It keeps me, it keeps me in line. I'm early for everything, and they joke about it in there. Wife has yeah, moaned. I'm smiling because I can time. relate. I'm yeah. annoyingly early for everything. I've got books in my car. I've got uh, to-do lists. I've got lists of numbers that I can call and <laughs> anything else because I'm already yeah. sussing out your disc profile, Steve, as we're speaking. I'm, I'm a high C. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Obviously, I need stats, research, data, facts, I need, figures. I need, I need, I need everything before I jump in with two feet. I'm very considered. Yeah. Um, I, I like to understand and be confident in what I'm talking about before I potentially offer opinions. Um, that's not to say I won't. It might just take me a bit longer than perhaps the high D's that will fly in with an answer. Um, well, I've got um, both in my profile, so. Yeah, okay. I I think with me, I think certainly from a time perspective, I don't like to be late at all for anything. I like to not be in a position where I'm rushing or I turn up agitated or stressed because I've got caught in traffic or something else has distracted me from what I'm going to attend or the meeting that I'm going to. What it also allows is if you do things in a, I suppose, a timely manner, it allows me to process. So I'll, I'll think quite a lot while I'm driving or I'm traveling. Um, it allows me to take the notes or make notes, mental notes or, or written. Um, but actually turning up prepared and ready for whatever that meeting is that you've turned up for because you've managed your time well, you're in control of the process and you've got that recognizable structure because you already know how you're going to conduct the meeting for me anyway keeps me calm and allows yeah. me to hopefully offer the best value when i'm talking to someone because i know i'm in a good state of mind no you are preaching to the converted because i am exactly the same but i want to go on to the next question because i actually yeah. haven't heard of this before so i'm really interested to hear about this what are extra time people or etp i haven't heard of this before this, um, it's actually a, a small kind of chapter in my first book, Top Villa. So to write Top we Villa. We will put the link to these books, by the way, guys, in the chat, um, in the comments after. We'll put, put the links put so you know where to go and get them. When I was, when I first started writing Top Villa, that was at, at the peak at Fast Track. So 19 staff, two offices, Manchester and Birmingham. Um, and I'd started it and I got, I suppose, I don't know, writer's block about six months in and stopped doing it um didn't do anything for probably another six months and i took the decision that over the christmas period that i just needed to get it done so i agreed with a publisher a day to get the book written by and i decided that five o'clock every morning i was going to get into the office and i'd have an hour and a half maybe two to effectively write a chapter or answer questions that then could become chapters and I, it got there was a comment to me i think it was like it was all right for steve um he's got more time than the rest of us or um 
there would be other comments where it's I don't know how you do or how do you always like manage to get more done than me or and I think it, it comes from a level of priority what everything we've discussed having value on your time but equally having that uh, I suppose that necessary oomph to get things done and actually mm. take action. I knew that the moment my office day started, so seven, half seven, consultants would be turning up to the office to get something done during that day, other than the work related tasks, it wouldn't happen. So I have to find the extra time to make it work. Um, and I think for me, it's it's about you find the extra time by batching tasks, multitasking, finding things that you can almost work together. So when I'm selling candidates and clients, I batch them together so that I've got a collection of maybe three to five of each. Even though I'm only selling one, you can potentially sell in three to five or you might have your top yeah. five that you can do at the same point. It's using your time wisely to actually achieve more. Um Okay, sometimes it's about getting up earlier. We talked off air, didn't we, about I have my yeah. sessions at 6 a.m. And that's because I just couldn't fit them in with life, kids, extracurricular activity and running. That's a last resort for work. me, going to the gym yeah. at that time. Absolute last yeah. resort. <laughs> I think you've just got to do it. There will always be people on this planet. We all have the same 24 hours and it's talked about a lot. Some people achieve so much and some people can achieve not even half of what they do. And I termed yeah. it as the extra time people. It's the people that are willing to find I like that. time to do what they need to do because they value that priority or that task high on their list. When when I've um, coached or mentored consultants, and, and this is in everyday life really, and I'd probably say the same to the my two boys, when people say I don't have time or I ran out of time or I didn't have time or I didn't quite get a chance to do that, what that effectively means or the way I understand it is either I haven't portrayed to them the value of the task that I thought they were doing high enough for them to make the time to get it done or they just haven't valued it the same because we all have tasks that we do. And actually, if you run out of time, it's because you've done other tasks ahead of it, which is fine. And that might well be the case. It might be down to communication, but Actually, if you're running out of time to do certain tasks, it's because you don't value it as high as the other ones you've got to achieve. So dependent on what it is, writing my first book was high on the priority list. But I also knew it wouldn't make me money while I was writing it. So yeah. I didn't want it to overtake the so task. So it couldn't come in the work day. Yeah, it, it would either have to be the admin times during the day, which I need to do or need to use to to be able to do the the revenue tasks in the sales core hours or I needed to find extra time so that's what I did right well I've just looked at the time and I did spot we're that coming well. close to the end and I, I know you've got a really good top tip right so I want to make sure we've got time for it just before I get to Steve's top tip just to give you a roundup of the next episode which is in a fortnight's time which I can't remember, off, you know it's live when you make a mistake. Can't remember what data is in a fortnight's time, but two weeks from today, right? Yes. So we're going to go live at the same time, half past 12. I've got Simon Bliss on with me, chairman of team. This is going to be a really good conversation around how you can use collaboration to navigate the current market. Um, and I'm really keen to talk about this because, again, this all relates to time management as well, how you can work with others to make the best use of your time. So join me and Simon in a couple of weeks. Let's get to your top tip. You run the day, don't let the day run you. I mean, it kind of summarises what we've talked about, but I, I think it's this is key. It's definitely a quote. I think it was Jim Rohn, I think. I might be wrong with that, but I think it encapsulates everything we've talked about. It's having that value. It's putting a value on your time. It's ensuring that you focus on your output, not somebody else's. There's another one isn't the same. Yeah. You work to your own agenda, otherwise you'll be working to someone else's. And that's what yeah. we've got to kind of think about, I think, as recruiters on, on any given day. Yeah, no, I love that. Well, look, Steve, thank you so much for coming on with me today. I know someone in the comments has asked about having a recording of this. It's going to go straight onto my YouTube channel. So when we get come off live, I'll share the link in the comments. 
you can watch it back as many times as you want on the channel that's fine so i'll put it on there what we'll also put in the chat i know steve is gonna share the links to his books but also you've got a monthly planner haven't you yep. I think yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. We'll put the link in that, or you can uh, somehow. No, if, yeah, is it link put, or if they put month planner in the comments, oh, there we I'll go. contact each person and we can get them emailed to them. Okay, brilliant. So there we go. You've not only come away with some amazing information on the live, but you're even getting a monthly planner out of it as well. I'm too good to you guys. I'm just too good to you. But look, we've come to the end. So again, thanks so much, Steve, for coming on. Thank that's you to pleasure. everybody that's watched, and we will see you in a fortnight. Take care, everybody. Take care.